is Patsy's Corner. And boy, it is hot. I'm fixing to celebrate the 4th of July, but first, I want to read you some wonderful 4th of July stories so you will know all about the 4th of July. I'm gonna put my fan down, it sure is hot, but you don't mind the 4th of July. This says, hats on for the 4th of July. By Harriet Zeford. And let's see what she's doing for the 4th of July. Okay, in Chinatown on the 4th of July, a grand parade will be marching by. Music and drum, music and drum. We're all waiting. See it come? The twirlers are walking down the street. They spin and strut and lift their feet. Music and drums, music and drums. Who will be the next to come? Cowboys on horses yell out loud. We'll all shout back. What a happy crowd. Music and drum, music and drum. Who will be the next to come? The big kids sit on top of the well. I'll ride next year right on his tail. Music and drums, music and drum. Miss Ella Grass will be on the next to come. She's a favorite of Chatham Town. Her hair is green and wraps around. <laughs> music and drum, music and drum. The big bass drum should be coming soon. <gasps> the high school band proudly marches by. What a sunny day, what a bright blue sky. See the band? They're ready to march. Music and vroom, music and vroom. The motorcycles need plenty of room. Patriots march by their muskets and hats. The Little League follows with baseball bats. Everyone marches on the 4th of July. Hats off, the flag is passing by. Music and drums, music and drums. We're sorry that the end has come. The parade is over, but look in the sky. Hooray for us all on the 4th of July. The end. And the whole town celebrated the 4th of July. The end. Now this is an old little book, and this is Henry's 4th of July by Holly Keller. Let's see what Henry does. Okay. Henry opens his eyes and looked out the window. The sky was blue and the sun was hot. Just right for the 4th of July. This year he could stay up to see the fireworks. Mama promised. Mama got baby Jack ready for the picnic. Papa packed the big basket. Don't forget the pickles, Mama said. Cousin Gertie made a paper flag for Henry to carry. Mama put Jake in the stroller. They were all ready to go. Uncle Joe bought the watermelon. Wow. Mrs. Murphy bought a wagon full of corn. They got there just in time for the parade. Papa brought potato sacks for races. Henry climbed into one and Mama tied it around the middle. Get ready, get set, go, Uncle Joe bellowed. And Henry bounced across the finish line in third place. If you've never had a sack race, this is a perfect 4th of July for a sack race. It's so much fun. Mrs. Murphy gave out the prizes. Henry won a little bear. A swim in the pond will cool us off, Mama said. Henry couldn't swim all the way to the route. But you are good at floating, Papa said. After the picnic, Uncle Joe dressed up as, as a clown. There's always somebody in the family that acts like a clown, acts silly, whether they dress up like a clown or not. A photographer took funny pictures and Dixieland Band played music for a dance contest. Papa tried hard to win. You think he won? Will the fireworks be soon, Henry asked. Very soon, Papa said. Come on, Mama said. Let's go up the hill where we can see better from there. Henry waited. He thought it would never start. All at once, the sky was bright with color. Henry counted 12 different designs. When it was over, Papa carried Henry home. It was too fast, Henry said. Mama smiled. 
It always is. Can we go again next year? Of course, said Mama. Henry pulled his little bear under the covers and went fast asleep thinking about all the fun he had on the 4th of July. The end. And that was Henry's 4th of July. All right, let's see here. Oh, I got one. Duck for president. Do you want to be president? Well, duck want to be president. And what a perfect time to be president for the 4th of July. There he is standing out. Looks like he's mowing grass and our airplane's going by. And it says vote. Well, running a farm is very hard work. At the end of this, each day, Farmer Bride is covered from his head to toe in hay, horse hair, seeds, sprouts, feathers, filth, mud, muck, and coffee stains. Doesn't smell very good either. Hoo wee! Even the pigs turn up their nose. The animals have chores to do too. Pigs clean under their beds. The cows weed the garden. The sheep sweep the barn. The duck takes out the trash, mows the yarn, and grinds coffee beans. At the end of each day, the pigs are covered in lint bunnies, the cows are covered in weeds, and the sheep are covered in dust. And the duck is covered with tiny bits of grass and beans. He looks tired, doesn't he? Poor duck. Duck did not like to do chores. He did not like picking tiny bits of grass and coffee beans out of his feathers. Why is Farmer Brown in charge anyway, thought Duck. We need an election. He made a sign and hung it up in the barn. Farmer Brown must go from election tomorrow. They want to get rid of that farmer. He wants too much work. The next morning, Farmer Brown found a poster on his front door. Vote Duck for a kinder, gentler farmer. The duck must have promised him, you won't have to work if I'm president. Farmer Brown was mad. He ran to the barn and found the animals registering to vote. Voter restoration, voters must live on the farm and show an ID. The mice got together and protested the height requirement. So duck crossed it off. The ducks could vote anyway. On election day, each of the animals filled out a ballot and placed it in the box. The vote was counted and the results were posted on the barn wall. Farmer duck six, duck 20. Farmer Brown demanded a recount. That's not right. One sticky ballot was found. <laughs> Y'all stuck to the bottom of a pig. Now the tally was Farmer Brown 6, Duck 21. Huh, said the duck. The voters had spoken. Duck was in charge. He was feeling proud. Running a farm is very hard work. At the end of each day, Duck was covered from head to toe in hay. Horse hair, seeds, sprouts, feathers, filth, muck, mud, and coffee stain. Running a farm is no fun at all, thought Duck. Vote for me. I'm a duck, not a politician. That night, Duck and his staff started working on the Duck's campaign for governor. Duck left Farmer Brown in charge and hit the campaign trail. He visited small towns and diners. He marched in the parade. Vote for Duck, vote for Duck. He went to town meetings. He gave speeches that only other ducks could understand. The vote was counted and the results were posted in the local paper. Wow, Miss Governor, 299,999. And Duck had 300,000. On election day, the voters filled out their ballots and the booths all over the state. The governor demanded a recount. Two sticky ballots were found stuck to the bottom of the plate of pancakes. The new tally was the governor, 299,999, and the duck had 300,000 too. The voters had spoken. Duck was in charge. Running a state is very hard work. At the end of each day, duck was covered from head to toe in hairspray, ink stains, scotch tape, fingerprints, mayonnaise, and coffee stain. And it had a very bad headache. Running a state is no fun at all. That night, Duck and his staff started working on posters for the president's election check. A duck for change, duck making us proud again. I like duck. Duck left his staff in charge 
and hit the trail. He kissed babies in local diners. He gave speeches that only all the ducks could understand. He even played the saxophone on late night television. On election day, the voters filled out their ballots and booths all over the country. The vote was counted and the results were in, announced on CNN. The president demanded a recount. 10 sticky ballots was found stuck to the bottom of the vice president and the new tally was wrong. The voters had spoken. Duck was officially in charge. Running a country is very hard work. At the end of each day, Duck was covered from face powder, paper cuts, staples, security badges, secret service agents, and coffee stains. He had a very bad headache. Running a country is no fun at all, thought Duck, and he's standing at the desk, ready to take charge. Then he checked out the help wanted desk. Duck needed. No experience necessary. Must be able to mow the lawn and grind the coffee beans. Well, Duck left the vice president in charge and he headed back to the farm. At the end of each day, Farmer Brown is now covered from head to toe in hay, horse hair, seeds, sprouts, mud, muck, and coffee stain. And Duck is working on his autobiography. So I guess he had lots of, of things to talk about and write about, about wanting to be president of the United States. And I bet he changed his mind before too long. And that's your story, Duck for President, the end. So if you decide you want to be a president or in the president's office, be sure you know what you're getting into. It. It's lots and lots of work, boys and girls. And the library wants you to have a wonderful 4th of July. And be sure and check you out some books to read under the shade tree and eat your watermelon. Thank you. Bye. All right. Don't forget, we're going to uh, Ventures Crafts and see what she's planning for the 4th of July. She's going to have lots of things planned for us. So y'all be sure to watch. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to Crafts Adventure. I'm going to show you how to do some little placemats for your table for the 4th of July. So you're going to need some pieces of construction paper and you're going to make you a little template with a star on it. You don't have to use it for this one. And once you do it, you cut your star out and you cut two little slits in the middle of your star, this first one. And what you're going to do is you're going to take some utensils and just slide it through like this so you can sit it on your table. And that's it for that. Next, I'm going to show you how to make some wind chimes or either some spirals to hang from your ceiling for the 4th of July. So you're going to need some construction paper. Three sheets because I have three different colors. And with your construction paper, you take your pencil and in the center of your construction paper, you draw a spiral. You start off small and then get bigger as you go. Okay, and once you have it drawn, you take with some scissors and you cut your spirals out. Okay, and once you get finished, it should look something like ours. If not, that's okay. <laughs> it's your spiral to do as you please. Okay. Okay, and when you come to see us in your bag, you'll have three handouts. One is a 4th of July crossword. Then you have a 4th of July word search and lunch maze. You can color that if you want to. Then we have another 4th of July word search. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Thank you, Madison, for helping me. I'll see you guys next week on Crash Adventure. Bye.